Hi, I will be talking about on-the-fly licenses for strictly alternating Petri games. This is a work in collaboration with uh, Kim Larson, Ed, and Marco from Albo University. Reactive systems generally contain a controller which is a software in an embedded system. Examples include automatic cars, train gate controller, etc. These controllers in general uh, um, interact with the uh, external environment which is adversarial in nature. One can capture this interaction using, using a reachability game where the controller has an objective to reach a goal state while the environment tries to avoid it. In this talk, we are going to um, interchangeably use the word controller and player 1, environment and player 2 respectively. These interactions in general um, uh, are captured by a popular games called turn-based games where every state is assigned to a player and the moves are decided accordingly. Note that in these kind of games the same player can have multiple moves in a sequence. However, if the player wa players want to play concurrently and they are in a race condition to achieve a reachability objective, this can be captured using petrinets, but turn-based games on petrinets are not necessarily convenient because the underlying marking can, may have a token in every place and it is not so straightforward to distinguish which place which marking belongs to which player. So we follow the suggestion that was made in this work by Jean Francois, which is alternating games for Petri nets. These are games with reachability objectives. Before we go into alternating games, let us let me first summarize the set of contributions we made in this paper. We first int we introduced the notion of alternating simulation and used a algorithm implemented an algorithm which uses this uh, alternating simulation. Although the termination is not guaranteed in general for this algorithm, the total correctness is guaranteed in case of finite graphs. And we also introduced uh, efficient alternating simulation for petrinets, for games on petrinets. And in the end, we conclude with experiments which show that the algorithm using this simulation relation performs in general better than a naive approach. On the left hand side you can see a game graph and uh, this has initial state as S0 and uh, the controller wants to reach this cold state S4. The solid moves indicate the controller moves, uh, solid arrows indicate controller moves and the dotted arrows indicate the environment moves. Now we we're going to play a alternating game on this game graph. Let the player one start the game, which is indicated by the configuration S not comma one. The player one can choose either A3 or A1. Let's say he chooses A1 and the game reaches S1. And since the semantics are alternating, now the player two has to play. And he plays the only possible explicit move, which is U2, and the game returns to S2. Now the player 1 wants to go back because he wants to reach S4 but the player 2 pushes the game back and this loop continues and it's an infinite run in which the goal state S4 is not reached so it's a losing run for the controller. On the other hand if A3 is chosen by the controller initially the game reaches S3 where um, the environment has no explicit transition. But since alternating semant uh, since these are alternating semantics, the environment uh, gives back the turn by playing what's called an epsilon move to the player one. Now the player one can play the possible A4 transition to reach the goal state, and from here on, both of the players play epsilon transitions because there is no explicit transition for either of them. Also note that there are states like S1 from which there is a controller and an environment transition which is not the case with the turn based games which we discussed before. In this talk we are going to discuss about reachability control problem which is to decide if the controller has a winning strategy to reach a goal configuration from an initial configuration. Before we look into the algorithm which 
tries to implement a solution for this, we look into the notion of what is called alternating simulation. This is a simulation. This is a relation among the configurations, such that S1 prime comma i simulates S1 comma i only if three of the following, all of the three, hold. The first one is if S S1 is a goal state, and so is S1 prime. Um, if there is a if there is a controller transition from S1 comma one, then S1 prime should also have that transition such that the resulting configurations are simulating each other. On the other hand, if the environment can force the up higher configuration with respect to simulation to uh, using a transition, the environment should also be able to force the smaller configuration which is S1 comma I to another configuration such that the resulting are in um, simulation relation. Now let us try to understand what is this simulation relation mean pictorially at a configuration of the ini if if a player one configuration is simulating another player one configuration what this means is all the transition enabled at the smaller configuration like t1 are also enabled here however there could be also extra transitions at the higher configuration on the other hand if it's a player two configuration um, any transition enabled of the environment here is also en enabled here and there could be extra transitions on the lower configuration. And it can also be the case that there is a goal configuration which is simulating a non-goal configuration. So in general it is more controllable and less uncontrollable transitions for the higher side configurations. If the environment has to choose between two configurations which are successors and one simulates the other, he chooses this one instead of this in the hope of avoiding this configuration. On the other hand, if the player one has to choose the controller, then he chooses the bigger transition, bigger configuration so that he can reach here. One of the key results is to say that if a configuration simulates another and the smaller configuration is winning, so is the higher. We prove this by induction on what is called the distance measure, which is a natural number defined as uh, defined for given a state and its winning strategy, the length of the longest run until it reaches a goal state. Note that given S1 is winning, D is finite. We prove this theorem by induction on D, which is the distance. If D is zero, which means S1 is a goal state, then by definition S1 prime is a goal state. On the other hand, if S1 distance is strictly positive, given the strategy sigma, then there must be a transition to a successor, which has, um, according to this strategy, uh, since S1 prime simulates this S1, it can, it can also take the same transition such that the resulting configurations are in uh, simulation relation and since S2 is uh, by definition has strictly smaller distance by induction hypothesis it must be a winning configuration so means uh, it also means S2 prime is winning which in turn means S1 prime is winning. On the other hand if there is an environment transition from uh, the S1 prime to t, uh, using T1 then by definition S from the same transition is also enabled at S1 and uh, also S2 is winning because uh, since S1 is winning for all the environment transitions it should result in a winning configuration uh, in particular S2 is also one which has a lesser distance by definition this means by, def by induction hypothesis S2 prime is winning and since T1 is arbitrary S1 prime is also winning. We implemented a fixed point computation algorithm proposed by Lewis Molka based on dependency graphs to solve the problem of reachability. It sometimes is not so efficient because of the state space explosion. On the other hand, we also implemented our algorithm which is which has the following four proper uh, following properties um, where at any given point of time, from my configuration, we pick a maximal successor in case of 
controller configurations if it is the environment's turn we pick the minimal configurations and also it keeps track of winning and losing states what this means is if um, a uh, it, it keeps track of the set of all ex already known winning and losing states and we can take advantage of it as follows if we know that there is a state which is belong uh, this is a configuration which is belonging to win and uh, and a new configuration s prime comma i simulates s comma i then we can add s prime directly to win similarly if the higher configuration s prime is already in loose then we can add all the lower configurations with respect to simulation relation to the loose set and dependency lists are used to update whenever the win and the loose sets are updated so that the initial configuration uh, will be updated all these steps together in general as we shall see in the experiments result in faster um, faster solutions because it reduces the state space some of other results about our algorithm are if the algorithm terminates and returns true the initial configuration is winning else it is losing and the other result is that if the if the underlying transition system is finite then the algorithm does terminate so this theorem along with the previous theorem means that on finite LTS the algorithm does give a correct answer always. We are we are going to apply this theory of um, alternating games to petronets uh, as suggested by these two works. Um, let us try to understand a petri game. Here is a petri game with um, green transitions indicating controller and these two transitions of the environment. The goal is to place a token here. All the edges have weight 1 except this edge which has a weight 2. On the right hand side is the marking graph of this petronet. From the initial marking either T0 or T1 can be fired by the controller. If T1 is fired this results in a marking which is deadlock because no other transition is enabled here. On the other hand if T1 is fired it results in a marking with two tokens one in each of these places. Since the alternating semantics, the controller has to play now and he cannot play this because there is a weight of 2 and he can, he can only play this one, which he, if he does, uh, the places the token back here. And from here again the environment has two transitions, T1, which again results in a deadlock, or T0, again, which puts a token here but it keeps accumulating tokens here. So what this means is this results in an infinite marking graph because the tokens keep accumulating here and they are not removed and this transition can never be fired because there is at maximum only one token in this place. So a naive approach to search whole, the whole of the um, uh, marking graph may not work. In fact in our, pa in our uh, paper we prove that the Petri games the reachability problem in general is uh, undecidable. So we restrict ourselves to bounded petronets and for efficiency we use alternating simulation. In case of petronets, alternating simulation is a syntax based definition. I will try to outline the definition here. First we divide the, the places from which at least one environment transition take a token from as PE, in other words PE quality. Uh, the rest of the places are PR and we say that a marking m prime simulates m m uh, m prime comma i simulates m comma i if and only if the following two conditions hold for all places in p in p e the upper and the uh, higher and the lower marking should have the same number of tokens and for all the places rest of the places um, the m prime should have more than at least as many as the smaller marking. Let us try to understand it pictorially. Uh, here is a, a petri game with uh, controller transition and environment transitions here, and uh, the final the goal is to place a token here. Note that p naught is the only place in the set p e because this is the only place from which an environment transition is taking a token from. Now after firing T0 and T1, the, the this initial snapshot results in these two snapshots. Observe that the number of tokens in the P 
p uh, uh, these two places is uh, greater than the number of place tokens here both of which belong to pr so this relation holds among these two markings so if we look at the underlying marking graph for this for this petri game um, our algorithm when it starts here and if it wants to select a successor the environment will always select this one because this is minimum on the other hand if we look at a new petri game where these two are controller transitions the controller picks the maximal transition no sorry maximal configuration which is this one so the uh, uh, the, the result of applying uh, this uh, si simulation is uh, sometimes performance gains as we sh as we shall show and also interestingly there are cases where uh, using this will terminate the algorithm whereas it is not possible otherwise here is an example which is some, which is the one we saw a little bit earlier the infinite marking graph these two configurations environment has to select one and uh, environment can select uh, only the minimal according to our algorithm so it uh, the algorithm avoids searching all the infinite subtree here and it terminates we have implemented the algorithm um, uh, and uh, we used three test uh, three use cases to show its performance the first one is a fire alarm use case which is which models the wireless protocol in a wire fire alarm system and uh, as you can see uh, this fire alarm system has sensors and channels and the number of states increase exponentially with the number of sensors and we list down the time taken for each of these instances by ls which is the least small algorithm and the alternating simulation our algorithm using alternating simulation and also the state space and the percentage reduction in time as you can see there is a exponential blow up in the number of states um, explored by the ls algorithm which results in um, although the number of states here almost remains the same so which 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 gives a huge reduction uh, in uh, percentage of time and we have another ex use case which is a student teacher example um, where also our algorithm performs better here to stands um, in general it, it performs better um, some of the cases the original algorithm times out whereas our algorithm does give an answer where time out means 5 hours of time and there are some interesting cases where our algorithm does not perform better it is because during the states during the cases where the number of states occupied are almost similar our algorithm suffers because of the fact that checking alternating simulation between two markings is linear time in complexity in the size of uh, the petrnet and we also have uh, the final the final um, use case is also a toy example that we implemented uh, where um, uh, it's like a game between cats and mice and the mice have to reach a particular location escaping from the cat and uh, also here we can see there is um, there are cases where there is a timeout and there is some of most of the uh, i mean like all the cases here uh, our algorithm performs better than uh, the other one in conclusion our simulation relation for we have introduced this uh, simulation relation for alternating games and also an on the fly algorithm which is sound and implements this um, and also uses this simulation relation which in turn gives a performance gain and termination in few cases in future we would like to use this for concurrent automata and uh, time petrnets and see if we can extend the definition of alternating simulation to these formalisms thank you